Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Vlognica 2023, where there are going to be daily videos here on this channel for the next eight days of Hanukkah. Not all of these videos are going to be related to my recent big career change announcement. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then please check the announcement video on my other channel. There's also public stuff that you can read on my Patreon, my newsletter. The information is out there. <sighs> But what you can expect over the next eight days are some vlogs, content about books and fashion, and a very, very exciting collab. <laughs> but this video is going to be related to my big career change. I have so far shared about the what's and the why's, but this video is going to be all about how. And actually, hopefully, this is going to be a video that will be useful to others too. Many of you maybe already have or will at some point in the future make a big decision in regards to your work or your life. But how, how do you make big decisions? I'm going to share with you what I did and the realizations that I had along the way that helped me figure out what it was that I had to do. If you are a subscriber to my newsletter, you may recall that on the 1st of August, I sent out a newsletter called my Career Crisis Toolkit. I'm not very subtle at all when I'm processing <laughs> big things, but a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video are things that I laid out but in a much more general way in that newsletter. This video we are going into the details, the discoveries that I made by implementing this toolkit. So let's dive in. These things are in sort of a chronological order but obviously there is going to be some overlap. One of the first things that was hugely influential in me making the decision to stop my online sex ed work was career coaching. So let me take you back to 2021. I've just found out that I'm pregnant and I feel like I need some help figuring out how to navigate maternity leave and parenting whilst being a content creator. So I reached out to somebody that I knew who was a career coach and I also knew that she was a mum, which definitely played into me wanting to work with her. And that first session that we had together was really about formulating a maternity leave plan and figuring out what it was that I actually wanted. That session with her really helped me formulate this plan to hire a producer, Mia, to help offload a lot of my work onto and for me to take three months off, 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 off work, off hosting, everything. Actually, one of the things that I discovered from that session was that I really wanted to take six months off to just focus on being a mum, but I ended up settling on three because I just didn't think it would be possible to maintain the career that I have with six months off completely. And the maximum amount of time that I had ever seen any other content creator take off for maternity leave was three months. So that was what I saw saw that was possible and so I went with that. In retrospect I'm actually really glad that it was three months because I think Rowan has really benefited from being in childcare and around other kids from so young and I think I really benefited mentally from having that kind of like part-time work routine also from when he was really young. So weirdly enough if slash when I have another kid that like three four month marker like is something that I think was very positive for us, but who knows, that's a hypothetical at this point. So I only had one session with her pre-maternity leave. I just feel like it was very efficient and I figured out what I needed to figure out from that. But then I reached out to her again in April, 2023, this year. And I had three sessions with her between April and July. And July was basically when I made the decision. So there are lots of things that we talked about and an exercise that she made me do that really helped me on this path to making this decision. So the exercise that she had me do was this projects evaluation grid. So this was before I was ever really contemplating quitting. I was just more in a place where I was frustrated, I was stuck, like I knew something needed to change and I was trying to figure out what that was. And so this exercise was just a Google spreadsheet with a list of all of the different projects that I do, plus potential 
new projects that I might want to do in the future. And in our sessions, we were talking about the things that make work enjoyable for me and the things that make work frustrating and not worth it for me. And so we had this list of criteria of like the costs and the benefits of my work essentially. And so for me, some of the costs were time, energy, money, and then things like inflexibility and hassle and pressure. And then some of my criteria for benefits were money, again, the impact that it has on others, a sense of ownership over the project, satisfaction, fun, collaboration, it using my strengths, there being space for personal growth and learning, all of these kind of different things. And then I would score each project against all of these criteria from a one to a three one being the lowest, three being the highest. And then I would add them all up, subtract the costs from the benefits, and then each thing would have a score. Now, this obviously isn't a perfect system because I was only doing one to three, but that just like helped me just pick a number. And of course it wasn't weighted. So you could get even more granular with this. If say like one criteria was more important to you than another, then you would weight that score higher. But I didn't bother with that. I just kind of wanted a snapshot look at how I, felt about my projects when you actually put a hard number next to it. So I did all of my projects, current and potential, but then I also scored my backup plan. And if you'll remember from a past video, I can't remember which, I talked about how I'd finally figured out what it is that I would want to do if I wasn't doing sex education. And so I took that thing and I also scored that. And guess what? My backup plan scored the highest. But that's kind of irrelevant because often like the new shiny unknown things are more desiring to us because you don't know the reality and the downsides of them. So when it came to current projects that existed, so I did have the full picture of those. So of the things that currently existed, the Hannah Witten channel, the sex and relationships videos, and the doing it podcast, but in its old format of the one-to-one -one interviews scored the lowest. The current series that we've been working on in the deep dive thematic format actually scored third highest. So that was a really positive thing because obviously that's taken up most of my time Time over this last couple of months after the fact of making this decision. So good thing. <laughs> good thing I enjoyed doing that. Definitely had a lot of fun making that. And there was a moment where I was like, oh, I could continue with the podcast next year. But actually, the more I thought about it, it just felt right for this final series being the end. It was complete. It was done. Seeing those numbers was very telling for me. There was this other thing that she explained to me during one of our chats that really, really stuck with me and made a lot of sense. And she was talking about there being two ways, the old way and the new way. And if you kind of think about it visually of like two lines, two paths, like following each other in parallel. So here I am going along on the old way, my current way, la 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 la, doing my sex and relationships, content creation, YouTube podcasting thing, la 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 la. Over the years, I would have a lot of these mini panics of like, I don't want to do this anymore. Anymore. This is awful. This is hard. This isn't joyful for me. I need to quit. And I would have these <laughs> fairly often, but I would always be pulled back to what I was currently doing because of the good things that I liked about it. And so like visually old way, new way, and I'd be going up and I'd be like getting a peek at the new way, but then I would be like pulled back down to the old way. And so it was like a lot of this, a lot of this throughout the years. But then as time goes on, what's happening is in instead of a fleeting visit and then being pulled back down, I'm staying up here longer and then being pulled back down. And so I'm just like hanging out here a bit longer and then like, oh no, the gravitational pull of the old current way was always more appealing. And so I always eventually was like, nope, this is what I want. But then what's happened over the years and especially since I kind of figured out what my backup plan would be, the gravitational pull of this new way has been getting stronger and stronger because what it actually is has become clearer to me. And so I'd be spending more and more time up there and then being pulled back down. And actually where I was finding myself when I was talking to her and why I reached out in the first place is because I was 
stuck in the middle because I was being pulled both ways and I didn't know what it was that I wanted to do. And that feeling of constantly bouncing between the two and then eventually getting to this point where I'm actually like stuck in between them and haven't like landed anywhere fully was very confusing and stress inducing and also gave the predicament this sense of urgency because I was untethered. And so the way that she provided me with that visual story of what had happened and how it isn't just something that's come out of nowhere in the last few months, in the last year. It's something that has like naturally been building this entire time. It really helped me understand the predicament that I was in and eventually realized that I had to make that leap. So as a career coach, she was someone that I was paying, but something that was free that really helped was peer coaching. So I had this work business sorting out our shit day with my friends Rowan and Taha on the 3rd of July. I'm giving you the dates because the timeline feels important in terms of like how I came to this decision. So one of the things that we did on this day together was a form of peer coaching. And basically what that means is that we each took it in turns and we had five minutes to explain to the others what our current situation was. And then the others had 20 minutes to ask questions. No advice, no advice. That was the rules, only questions. And this was honestly amazing. I think it was pretty much this session with them that unlocked everything. Rowan and Taha just asked me all of the right questions, really simple ones as well. Like, what if you did this? How would you feel if this happened? Because one of the ideas of coaching is that you already have all of the answers and the other person is there just to help facilitate you in getting to those answers. And that is very much what they did for me that day. But yeah, I explained to them the situation that I was in, that I really felt like I needed something to change, that I needed a break. And I can't remember the specific questions they asked me, but I ended up just like saying out loud, just being like, oh, I think this is what I need to do. Oh, oh, this is, this is the natural conclusion to every everything that I've been saying. Woo! That was a big day. Also on that day, we did some reflection exercises. So this is something that we did from Ali Abdul's new book, Feel Good Productivity. He kindly let us use some of the exercises in his book, even though it's not out yet. So thank you, Ali. But these reflection exercises were essentially a form of journaling, like you're given a prompt and you kind of like write about what that thing would be or how you'd feel like, what do you want your day to be like in five years time? And like all of that kind of stuff. What do you want people to say at your funeral? and things like that. And my answers to those questions were very telling. <laughs> like when you're actually forced to sit down and confront the thing and journal about the thing, what came out was very interesting. Without having already made the decision to stop the sex and relationships content and pursue this career as a project manager for other creators, I was essentially journaling about this life where that is what I had done. So there we go. But then the thing I did to really consolidate and reflect on that day from the peer coaching and from the reflection questions that we did was a few days later, I went back over my notes and I wrote a list of things I've discovered, like really just like bullet points, stripped back, really simple, like this is what I've learned, bam, bam, bam. And I want to share with you the things that I wrote down. So this was still like early July. I want sex nerdery to be a hobby slash personal interest. I want YouTube to be a hobby. I want to keep my Patreon community. I'm leaning towards not wanting to do the podcast anymore. I want to help creators run their shit. <laughs> So I'd kind of realized by this point what it was that I needed to do and wanted to do, but to make sure that it was the right decision for me, I started journaling. So I talked about this briefly in the actual full announcement video, but I wanted to go into a little bit more detail here. Now, before I talk about the journaling that I did this summer that helped specifically with this decision, I wanted to take us back to 2020 when I did my first round of journaling about this. So on the 5th of March, 2020, I started journaling about wanting to take a break from making online content. This was in response to watching Evelyn from the internet's video where she talked about taking a year off and that she was back from her year off. Cog started turning for me and so I wanted to journal to see how these feelings developed and if I could spot any patterns. So the things that I documented was I wrote the 
date, I would write how I felt, what it was triggered by, and then any actions that I took, if any. And reading back on it, these entries really flip from being sad and anxious and confused when work was stressful to being calm and reassured and confident after having had like a conversation with Dan or my friends or other colleagues. It was really a lot of flip-flopping and it was a very emotionally turbulent year. I wanna share with you an entry that came from March 2021. So I wrote how I felt, some clarity, but very confused about what to do about it. What caused it? Abby's interview, Abigail Thorne, with Owen Jones, when she said how she knew she wanted to keep acting. If someone told you you couldn't do X anymore, how would you feel? And if I answer that question for YouTube slash social media influencer stuff, I would feel dot 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 relieved. But does that mean I need to quit? A load of question marks. Actions taken? None. Just lots of thinking and freaking out about what that answer means. I'm even in a good place with YouTube at the moment. Metrics are good and I'm enjoying what I'm making, but my answer was still relieved. What would it be if I was in a low point? Question mark, question mark, question mark. So that's from almost three years ago. You can tell that this decision has been a long time coming. It's been slowly brewing and simmering over time. The last journal entry that I wrote was after my first career coaching session. Then I started journaling again this year on the 27th of July, actually after I realized what the decision was that needed to be made, but I was journaling to like sit with it and see how it felt. And it was really interesting again to read over some of those entries because I could tell that I was mentally checked out. When having video planning sessions and trying to come up with ideas, I found myself being really uninspired and unmotivated to make any of those videos. I also during this time was when I experienced my first Instagram shadow ban. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'd journaled about being frustrated about the admin to get myself unshadow banned, but ultimately like I didn't care, like there were no emotional stakes for me in that. Whereas if I was still super invested in sex and relationships being my career and making that kind of content online, I feel like I would have had a much more heightened emotional reaction to it. But instead I was just like, like, nah. like in theory, in terms of the political side of things, fuck meta. But for me personally, and how I was personally affected by it, I was just like, oh well. <laughs> another day. <laughs> and generally, I think it's really interesting how I personally make decisions. Like I've noticed a bit of a pattern over big decisions that I've made in my life over recent years, which essentially the way that I seem to go about things is, is I simmer and I flirt with an idea for months, maybe even years. And then something happens that's potentially out of my control, like circumstances change or whatever, that then triggers that that decision to then get made and I go from zero to a hundred. Although it may feel like zero to a hundred, it's really not because something has been brewing in the background for a a much longer time. But I noticed that with like getting this studio, that was something that I made the decision on super fast, but really I'd been thinking about it for a couple of years beforehand when Dan and I were going to move house, but obviously that didn't happen, a whole video about that. But that was also something that went really fast initially before it didn't happen. And then this as well, it just feels like, it just was like, okay, this is happening now. And as soon as I'd made the decision, it was like, right, that's it, right? Decision made, let's go. Once that switch is flicked, there's no going back for me. But I wanna share with you what I wrote on the 3rd of August, because I feel it's very insightful into where my head was at, at that time of having made the decision, but still being in this murky area where there was a lot of confusion and fear around making that decision, because I hadn't told anyone yet. I told my husband, Dan, but by having not told anyone, I mean, I hadn't told my team yet, which would have been like making the decision real. So at this point, I'm very much just like still sitting with it myself. Self. So I wrote, why I want to move on. Mental health impact of online social justice. Feeling bored slash uninterested slash unmotivated with topic. Feel stale. I've said everything I want to say, have nothing left to say. Empty tank slash exhausted. Feeling ready. Time to move on. Excited about other projects slash jobs. Can't afford current situation. What's stopping me? Letting down my audience. Don't want them to feel like I'm abandoning them. Letting down my team. Impact on their income. Letting down my patrons. Can I provide value to the community? 
outside of the free sex and relationships content they support. Fear of change, fear of loss of income, fear of giving up the thing that I'm known for, fear of making the wrong decision and not being able to go back. And then this last one's really interesting. Fear of my personal situation playing out the same way as general social trends around gender, women, and work after having a kid and how that impacts my identity and public perception as a feminist. <laughs> Way to overthink it, Hannah. Oh, but it's true. Ever since Rowan was born, Dan and I have had very stereotypical experiences as a cis woman and a cis man who have a child together. Dan's career, amazing. Promotions, left, right and center. Pay rises, all of the things. Well done, he's a dad now. So responsible and amazing and such a hard worker. What a family man. Obviously all those things are true about Dan, but I'm talking like general social trends here. And then me, she takes time off work. She goes part time, she loses uses a lot of her income. She's like struggling to balance everything. She's quitting like <laughs> And whilst I know deep down that that is absolutely not a personal failing of me, and it's also like okay for that to be my narrative, it's still definitely something that I think about. So another thing that happened during this time was I had a tarot card reading. I know this is a wild card, stick with me please. I was at a market with Rowan, there was somebody doing tarot card readings, I was having all of these thoughts flying through my head constantly, I just thought fuck it, let's go. So so I had this tarot card reading on the 1st of July. So this was before the day with Rowan and Taha, before I'd made a decision. This was very much when I was in that something needs to change but I don't know what it is zone. So she pulled a past, present and future for me which were strength, judgment and the world. So all major arcana cards which apparently is cool. <laughs> And then I really don't know how the rest of it works, but she pulled the Page of Swords, which went with judgment. And then she pulled the Hermit, which went with the world. And then there was also a Two of Cups and a Ten of Swords somewhere in there that brought it all together, but I can't remember exactly how. And bear with me, I just really want to read with you the Biddy Tarot definitions of the three past, present, future cards that I got. Because remember, at this time, I hadn't made a decision yet. So that was my present. My present was the confusion and the not knowing what to do. Me now having made the decision and announce it to the world, this is her future. I'm in her future. Does that make sense? Okay, so my past strength. The strength card represents strength, determination, and power. The strength card speaks to the inner strength and the human spirit's ability to overcome any obstacle. Strength is about knowing you can endure life's obstacles. You have great stamina and persistence, balance with underlying patience and inner calm. You are committed to what you need to do and you go about it in a way that shows your composure and maturity. And you know what? I relate to that in terms of this career that I have been on and then also the way that my personal life has intersected with that in terms of my health and relationships and all of that stuff. Present judgment. The judgment card is calling you to rise up and embrace a higher level of consciousness for the service of your high highest good. <laughs> <laughs> you are experiencing a spiritual awakening and realizing that you are destined for so much more. Okay, I don't relate to the drama of this, but kind of. This is your cosmic up leveling. <laughs> you hear the call and are ready to act. Tune in to a higher frequency. Let go of your old self and step into this newest version of who you really are. Oh my God. If we take the like cheesiness out of it, then yeah. Yeah, that's the pep talk that I needed at the time. So then the future card was the world. When the world card appears in a tarot reading, you are glowing with a sense of wholeness, achievement, fulfillment, and completion. I really relate to the word completion. A long-term project, period of study, relationship or career has come full circle and you are now reveling in the sense of closure and accomplishment. This card could represent graduation, a marriage, the birth of a child or achieving a long-held dream or aspiration. You have finally accomplished your goal or purpose. Everything has come together and you are in the right place, doing the right thing, achieving what you have envisioned. You feel whole and complete 
complete. Well, fuck me. <laughs> It doesn't say, well, fuck me in the thing. And honestly, even though I'm not a super spiritual person, damn, damn, that is what it feels like. That it does feel good. Interestingly though, those meanings resonate for me so much more now than they did then because I was just such a confused ball of mess at that time. I remember like it helping in some ways and me being like, well, I already knew that. Like that's what I already knew. Like it was telling me that something needed to change, but what I wanted to know was what needed to change, but that was something that I had to figure out. But it was nice for me, I guess, that the tarot cards were telling me, yeah, 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 something needs to change. Yeah, you're right, change needs to happen. Go on then. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <laughs> But then the other things like the career coaching and the peer coaching and the journaling helped me figure out what. So there you have it. There is how I came to this decision. It took me a while and then it took me no time at all. I'm curious to know what has helped you make big decisions in your life. Were there any similar things that you did to me or were there completely different things that helped you? I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you wanna share. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.